What's going on everybody, Jem Mint here, and today we're going to do a thorough review of the death and return of Superman Omnibus, and we're going to find out if it's gimmick or greatness. Before we do that, we're going to do overhead shots, and I'll give you my final thoughts after that. Before we jump into it though, I want to thank Dynamite Entertainment for sponsoring this video. Like I've been saying, Nick Barucci and Dynamite have been working closely with myself and a bunch of other content creators being the most recognizable comic book publisher in the community, and they have a huge week of new comics dropping this week, Wednesday, January 5th. They have a new Panther series launching with a new number one, Mirka Andolfo's Red Sonja continues with issue 5, Fred Van Lente on Jennifer Blood issue 4, we've got Evil Ernie too. Deja Thoris vs. John Carter of Mars Issue 6, and Elvira meets Vincent Price Issue 4. So a huge week for Dynamite. Make sure to check out those titles at your local comic shop. With that being said, let's jump into the Omnibus. Alright guys, so this is technically the second printing of the Death and Return of Superman Omnibus. The first printing had kind of a black dust jacket with Superman laid out on the concrete. Then the third printing came out and it had a black dust jacket as well, but the Superman cape flag. And it looks like the new fourth printing is going to have that same one. So interesting that they went with different art designs with all of these printings. Not really a fan of this kind of updated Jurgens and Ordaway uh, dust jacket. It looks kind of too colorful and I don't know. I'm not really digging it. I think I'm going to get the fourth printing and I'll probably sell this one. But this is the front and back of the dust jacket. Originally had a $100 cover price. These printings all went out of print and all became grails, so cool to see a fourth printing coming. It collects Death of Superman, Funeral for a Friend, and then the Reign of the Superman stories. Oh, the inside of the dust jacket has a little like synopsis of what's going on here and kind of just more Superman books. And we have that same image on the dust jacket as a wraparound cover. I mean, it's okay. I, I like the sleek black look for Death of Superman. I mean, that's how that polybagged... Uh, Superman 75 looked when it came out, right? All right, so jumping into this omnibus, great cover page here of Superman. Superman in the, obit in the obituaries. Is that how you say it? Here we have the credits, Dan Jurgens, uh, Jerry Ordaway, Louise Simonson, and more. Classic panel from the death. So it starts off giving us a little bit of Man of Steel issue 17, the first cameo of Doomsday. And I like it, man. This guy just comes out of nowhere punching uh, the steel enclosement and you can see his knuckles growing and his his glove peeling back as he's punching through it and then you know boom he finally breaks free and then first full appearance of doomsday uh man of steel issue 18 here's that poly bag cover that i was talking about and yeah just jumps right into it man doomsday breaks free it's kind of a mystery where he came from or who he even is uh, and then I like how, you know, I just recently reviewed Superman the Exile Omnibus, and this is kind of a couple years later. Same creative team, though, but it's missing about 40-so issues in between, you know, all the titles each, right? So they would each have, like, about 40 issues or so. Doomsday, right away, showing no regard for life, killing this bird and laughing about it. Have these little underground guys, some story that Lois is chasing. No big deal. Flashing more to Doomsday, showing his strength. Nice big double page spread. This panel always stuck with me for some reason. Lois Lane kicking Superman in his ass. Then Doomsday starts the destruction, right? Now he's destroying humans. This big semi-truck leaves it destroyed, laughing. Then it jumps into Justice League. So the Doomsday vs. Justice League stuff was brutal, man. They really wanted to capture how powerful he was. And Doomsday mops the floor with these guys, man. Guy Gardner, um... Blue Beetle beats them relentlessly. So Doomsday's just doing a, a beeline. No, really no agenda right now until he kind of uh, gets a whiff of uh, Metropolis having a lot of people there. Look at Guy Gardner, man. These guys get bloodied and bruised. Blue Beetle. It's like, I'm surprised they even survived this, man. Like, the beating that he puts on them. And he does it all with one arm tied behind his back still. So I like that aspect of of Doomsday on how he's at a handicap at first. Man, look at Blue uh, Blue Beetle here. He's at a handicap and he uh, he eventually you know breaks free of his re restraints and then goes toe to toe with Superman. So what's funny is here's Ice. Uh, she's recently in the Tom King um, Human Target run. So cool to be reading that and then come back and seeing some older stuff. Doomsday versus Superman jumps off right here. 
this stuff was pretty serious, man. With this kid and his mom, this, this these whole panels right here hit pretty home on how she kind of blames her for dad uh, wanting a divorce. Man, it's kind of like I don't know. And then the mom is, I don't know, it's sad, man. Which uh, is great character development, man. Like that comes back around later on with that kid. You know, Superman and Justice League all trying to take down Doomsday together. Boom, both arms are free now. No match for Doomsday. So Doomsday, he doesn't fly, but he can leap really far, kind of like Hulk, right? And now Superman is starting to realize, man, this guy is a serious threat, man. Like, I really need to, to take him seriously, and they continue their battle. Superman chases him. At this point, I think uh, Doomsday is beelining towards Metropolis. Here's the kid that was mean to his mom, and their house is burnt down, and he's worried about his baby sister, who he kind of resented before that. Superman tries to figure if this guy can't fly, let's just get him in the dirt underwater and try to hold him off for a few minutes. But, you know, that doesn't really hold Doomsday for too long. We have Maxima back. So it was nice to see, like, all these characters uh, that we just read recently from the Exile Omnibus. I would really love to see an Omnibus that bridges the gap. Okay, so this is actually where Doomsday decides to go towards Metropolis because he sees this ad on TV. So now he's got a plan. Now we have Lex Luthor. So since the last Omnibus, he has uh, placed his consciousness in a younger clone of himself posing as his son. And then we have Matrix, who has gone full on Supergirl, kind of in a relationship with Lex, I guess. And see Doomsday kind of talking, Metropolis. And Superman realizes that he's headed that way. Just huge, epic destruction going on in this fight. Boom. Doomsday gets away. 50 miles to Metropolis. So now it's kind of like the race to stop him from reaching Metropolis. Love the artwork here. This era is like one of my favorite eras for sure. That's uh, Seems like they did that in Batman vs. Superman, right? You got uh, John and Martha Kent watching from home. Got Doomsday in the full Nelson. Nick, let's look at Superman. He looks exhausted. He's bleeding. This, I always, uh, it always confused me as a kid because I didn't realize that Supergirl was Matrix. They don't refer to her, I think, maybe once in the end of this omnibus. But I didn't understand why her face splattered like that when Doomsday punched her. But it's because she's a shape-shifting alien. Yeah. I mean, I guess I knew she was an alien reading it as a kid, but I didn't have any context. Uh, then we got Bibbo, the guy that runs the bar. Uh, he, he's been introduced, I think, ever since you know the last omnibus and uh, ends up being a big uh, Superman supporter. Final battle starts, Superman 75. So you get the death of Superman. It's really only, what, six or seven issues or so? It's not that many issues. Uh, the bulk of this omnibus is, yeah, like I guess the, the aftermath, you would call it. So the iconic book, Death of Superman, news cameras in the sky, kissing Lois goodbye here. Big single page spreads for multiple pages. Wow. I don't think I noticed that as a kid, right? But after reading so much, look, no panels. They're all just single pages. Finally showing the eye uh, lasers. They feel, I feel like they don't really show it as much in this era. You just see whatever he's looking at, like, burning up. Superman with the red blood. That's interesting. Got, playing Mercy up here. That epic uh, Rocky Apollo Creed homage. And that's it, man. Those are the punches that kill each of them. Jimmy Olsen's got it in uh, frame there. Boom, the parents watch him die. The Justice League watches him die. And he dies in Lois's arms. This is actually a fold-out in the original comic and in the third printing omnibus. So... Uh, we'll, we'll have to see if the fourth printing has that. And that's it, man. That's Death of Superman. Then we jump into Funeral for a Friend. Now, as a kid, I read a lot of these sporadically because I had the Death of Superman trade paperback, and I read that thing back in front like a hundred times. Then these, I had a couple issues here and there. For Reign of the Superman, I had like the die cut covers, and I think that was it. So there was definitely material in here that I hadn't read. This is the immediate aftermath, trying to figure out, do they try to resuscitate Superman? Obviously, their instruments aren't able to. Here goes Matrix again. Finally gets back into Supergirl form. Carrying Doomsday away. 
Then Bibbo jumps in. He takes the defibrillators. He tries to uh, resusc- uh, resuscitate Superman. And now Lois really trying to, ha- you know, to accept the fact here. Funeral for a friend. Uh, Superman 685 or oh, Action Comics 685 with the uh, Action One homage. So, funeral f- for a friend is what you would think it is. It's how everyone's reacting uh, to the death of Superman. You know, f- whether it's media, whether it's superheroes or regular uh, civilians, his parents, his fiance. Lex Luthor is pissed because you know he feels like he was robbed. He's the one that wanted to kill Superman, so that's his whole shtick. Which is why he takes such a heavy role in uh, the burial of Superman. Supergirl kind of stepping up to be the new hero in town. Bibbo upset that he wasn't able to save Superman. Here we have Man of Steel 20. So the art changes a little bit here. Especially in the Steel issues. It looks like this. It has like a, kind of like a Disney's Hercules vibe to it. I kind of dig it. There's a little John Romita Jr. vibe going on here. Not as good as... Uh, The Doomsday Death of Superman arc, but still decent. You got the parade going on with all the heroes. Even Lobo is pissed that Superman was killed by someone else. Love how Batman stops this guy in the crowd from doing something he shouldn't be doing. My man selling Superman merch. Bibbo gets pissed, but just buys out the whole lot. (laughs) So this is the heroes trying to, you know, stop rioting and craziness from happening during the ceremony you got bill and hillary clinton here that's pretty funny so burying superman so lois she doesn't she can't bring herself to call the kents she finally does and i don't think she gets a hold of him right away great cover here funeral for a friend issue four you got this kid here from uh earlier remember what he was mean to his mother So, the supporting cast was great, man. I mean, from uh, the Daily Planet crew to just Bibbo and this other kid. Actually, Justice League, uh, they try to help with the damage that's been caused by the battle. And uh, they end up fixing that kid's mother's house. So, that was pretty cool. Then here's the big monument, uh, the tomb where Superman is buried, courtesy of Lex Luthor. Because if he can't kill Superman, he's damn well going to bury him. That's his whole thing, right? Uh, but then there's kind of like, you know, a lot of a lot of commotion going around Superman's burial. You end up having religious factions that grow. You have uh, grave robbers. So already someone broke into his tomb, uh, and they find out that there were already underground caverns there. Lex Luthor admits that you know this was originally going to be something else. It's not like we put caverns here to get to Superman. This was a structure that was already built that had tunnels. So. Your boy, uh, what is it, Jose Delgado, reprising his role as gangbuster since Superman's gone. Crime is up in Metropolis. And this is following the underground caverns, running into those underworld dwellers from uh, the very beginning of the omnibus. That's kind of like the first suspects on who robbed Superman's grave. But it ended up not being them. It ended up being, um, man... The evil corporation guy. What's his name? Was it the guy Turpin? I can't really remember. But they want to uh, they want to clone him. So isn't it the same people that um, house the Guardian and that ragtag group of kids or whatever that th- who are clones as well? Yeah, so they want to clone Superman because they're like, look, man, crime is up. Superman is gone. We need to have, you know, people on our side that can help us. So here we go. So you have... Uh, arguing over the ethics of that and end they end up agreeing on actually allowing them to keep his body to make the clones like lex luther doesn't argue he's a clone even though no one else knows the legacy of superman was the dullest book here man it was a super long oversized issue if it was released today it would have been one of those 80th anniversary joints with multiple stories kind of highlighting different players in this world the guardian being one of them um what is this a maxima story they would you know they could have left this out of here i would say this character never even really plays a a role gangbuster again which is like all right i'm so over gangbuster already you get this lex luthor story with these people that never show up again are are they the wonder twins i don't remember it's just kind of like superheroes picking up the slack with superman being gone 
Then you had the Wave Rider story. That was interesting. I mean, I haven't seen Wave Rider since I read the uh, Zero Hour Omnibus. It's just kind of a Wave Rider going and experiencing those events of the battle. All right, finally out of that issue. Then Jonathan Kent ends up uh, falling ill as well. Uh, you know, his heart just can't take it. The death of his son, his adoptive son. Here's the clone kids, the ragtag group. I forget what they're even called. Uh, the newsboys. So, you know, they, they don't like that Superman's there kind of being operated on or whatever. The underground. It's like the DC's version of the Morlocks, basically, right? Lois Lane gears up to try to rescue Superman's body. She finds out that he's being held captive and is understandably upset. Great cover here. Funeral for a friend. Issue 8. Pro tip. That Roman numeral 2 means this was the second printing of that single issue. So here's a little bit more backstory on what happened with Lex Luthor, on how it all started from wearing the kryptonite ring and how it ended up uh, giving him radiation that uh, led to the loss of his hand and eventually his body to die. Here's Jonathan Kent being rushed to the hospital now. It's just too much for his heart. And then here goes uh, Jonathan Kent. Looks like he's passed away at the end of this issue. Now, I this was one of the issues I did have as a kid, and I always thought it was pretty deep for like a Superman comic. Like the art style looked biblical. I mean, this looks like Sistine Chapel vibes, and it's basically uh, Jonathan Kent's subconscious interacting with Superman in the astral plane, in heaven, in his mind. I mean, whatever you want to call it, you know. But he seems to uh, rescue Superman from demons in like the afterlife, which kind of brings on the reign of the Superman and eventually the return of Superman. So it's kind of like one of those things, like, did he really interact with Superman or not really? Was it just in his mind? So this is him in the mindscape, and that's where it looks different. The art style is different a little bit, and he's reliving his times during the war. He's interacting with these demons, which is pretty interesting. What DC's versions, uh, version of Eternity there. And then Superman being carried away which looks like by a Kryptonian priest, but they're really demons in disguise. Jonathan can help Superman fight back and not go into the light and go back home. Jonathan Kent is resuscitated here. And then people start uh, claiming they're, they're seeing uh, sightings of Superman, one of them which looks like a super boy. And uh, we start getting introduced here goes uh, Henry Johns, is that what it was? Who's uh, basically just a victim of the destruction during the Battle of Doomsday. And he's basically just a good Samaritan type of guy. Another Superman appears that looks just like Clark Kent, but he's wearing a visor. Uh, we'll get into his origin. Uh, the Superboy body has broken out, and we come to find out that they were working on a clone of Superman, but the Newsboys busted him out prematurely, so he hadn't fully matured yet, and he is basically... A teenager but he doesn't like being called Superboy so don't ever call him that and then the last Superman he's got a red eye he's got a messed up foot his face looks messed up and boom he's basically Terminator 2 <laughs> cyborg Superman so he he claims to be Superman they all claim to be Superman but some are a little bit more like obvious that they're not like steel is obviously not Superman although He's the only one that has, like, the heart of Superman. He, he's the only one that's, like, really good, I guess. Superboy is pretty good, but um, he also admits to just being a clone of Superman, so the, the world knows. This right here is kind of a little flash-forwarding. This is the Eradicator. So, so last time we left off from the Superman, the Exile Omnibus, the Eradicator was a kryptonite artifact. It ended up growing its own city at the end of that book, and between that book and this one, it ended up growing a consciousness... And it ends up feeding off of the body of Superman, uh, becoming this version of Superman. But again, you know, unlike uh, Steel, he doesn't have Superman's heart. He, he wasn't raised by John and uh, Martha Kent. So he's pretty twisted. He's almost like a Homelander. He kills uh, his victims or, or whoever he's fighting. So right away you're like, man, he looks like Superman, but this ain't Superman. Like he wants to do good things and save people, but just the way he goes about it is just not what Superman would do. He tells Lois Lane that he is Superman. It kind of seems like he knows that Superman is Clark Kent, but there's obviously something off about him. Then Steel seems like he's a big bro in the neighborhood, and he uh, is a weapons engineer manufacturer. Kind of has like Tony Stark-esque you know, issues with 
creating weapons that were ended up being used for harm. So he no, is, he's no longer in that business and he wants to get those weapons off the street. He was saved by Superman who uh, in return wanted him to just, you know, don't waste the life that I saved. So he kind of, uh, yeah, Iron Man style puts together this suit with weapons and jetpacks on his uh, boots and everything. And he's going to get those weapons that he created off the streets. This guy, super creep, man, trying to get Lois Lane off the rebound. I was angry how much uh, Lois Lane entertained it. I, mean, I get that, you know, everyone's saying that Superman is dead, but like, sheesh, what, ha, ha, what has it been? Two weeks? So here's just the steel stuff. I liked it. Very 90s with this big. What, what was her name again? Like, uh, White Rabbit or something? Then we get a Cyborg Superman issue. I mean, he looks evil right away, right? I mean, it's hard to believe that he's the real Superman. But, you know, his biology is Kryptonian. And um, it makes sense that Superman would have needed repairs after the fight with Doomsday. It ends up being that he, his name is uh, Hank Henshaw. And he has, like, a Fantastic Four type of origin where him and his wife and his crew were in space. And they got hit with cosmic radiation and got powers. And he ended up becoming, like, this machine his consciousness can go into machines and stuff. He ends up uh, stealing Doomsday's body, wraps him up on an asteroid, and sends him out into space. That's a great uh, shot right there. But what's interesting about sending Doomsday out to space here is that Doomsday is alive as well, man. So that doesn't come back to play in this omnibus, but obviously later on in comics it does. Yeah, so basically... Uh, Cyborg Superman is not even close to being Superman. All right, so boom. Then we have a Superboy story. He's funny, man. He's a teenager. His hormones are raging. He wants to get girls. He uh, He's easily influenced. He ends up partnering up with uh, a rival news station with a, with a news reporter that he just thought looked good and gives them the exclusive Superboy stuff. You know, he tries to do the right thing as well, but he's reckless. Like, he'll save people, but damage the bridge, and people underneath will get hurt, you know? So he, he learns the hard way throughout his uh, time trying to be Superman. Then you got Guy Gardner. He runs into the Superman, the man of tomorrow, but he digs how that Superman handles punishment or, or hands out punishment to, to criminals. So Guy Gardner champions uh, the Eradicator Superman as the one true Superman, which is pretty funny. They fight first, but then they end up, uh, he becomes a little fanboy. And here he is basically telling the news, like, yeah, man, that's Superman, all right. Then we start getting the reign of the Superman battling with each other, man. So Steel versus Superboy. And this is kind of one of those lessons that Superboy learns that he needs to, like, think before he acts. This is, like, a, one of the main uh, weapons pushers of the Steel story. So when Superboy goes out, he only goes out with the news crew with him. And, and what what's happening is, like, the uh, the head editor of that news station creates crime in order to get Superboy out there to punish crime, which his report, you know, that reporter that I mentioned is kind of realizing that they're doing the wrong thing here. Then this is the issue, I believe, where uh, Cyborg Superman... Oh, this is a great issue. So this, this writer, he wants to be a writer. So this is his article, right? And he really wants, you know, Clark Kent's job. Not in a bad way, but to, you know, to be a reporter to uh, fill some big shoes. So that's the article that he writes on uh, the day that um, Cyborg Superman saved the president. It was a good, uh, well-written issue. I really like how this one went down, which lands the kid the job at the Daily Planet. Here goes Bill Bubba again. Cyborg Superman gives him a uh, special Kryptonian pager. And then here's uh, that the, the article that he wrote. So more team up stuff, boy meets girl. Superboy versus Supergirl. She convinces him to join Lex Luthor's squad, you know, her home team, which he agrees to. But as soon as another pretty face walks in his face, you know, in, in his presence, he ends up signing a deal with somebody else. So he's just very immature and easily influenceable. So now we have this threat that's in outer space here. They're monitoring all four supermen. They're lingering out there. We don't know what's going on yet with them but that ends up being a huge deal so superman and uh superboy and supergirl teaming up then we get this going on and it's kind of like man who the hell is this is this superman's body he seems to be in the same place where the eradicator has been um seeing what's going on on screen with all the different supermen 
That part kind of did confuse me a little bit. I think that was actually the true Superman. Then we have the battle between the Eradicator and Steel. It's kind of where Steel finds out that, man, there's something wrong with this guy. <laughs> that alien ship looming, it uh, ends up being Mongol, which you can kind of tell right there. And leads into the huge kind of climax of Reign of the Supermen. And it really shows who's good and who's bad and who's the main threat here. Superman can't see without that visor. I guess it's kind of like your you've ne your eyes you've never used them, kind of like Matrix style, right? Why are my eyes, sir? You've never used them before. So Lex Luthor tries to team up with Homegirl's name. I forget her name, man. Who actually ends up being like, I guess, an ex-girlfriend of Steel, and she's like the major player in town. All right, then we have Cyborg Superman versus Eradicator Superman, and boom. The, the huge ship is starting to come into play. It actually uh, breaches the atmosphere and it hovers over over a coast city. Cyborg Superman takes out um, Eradicator Superman and doesn't stop the, the, the total annihilation of Coast City, Green Lantern's hometown, which he's off planet right now. But they totally wipe out the entire city, killing millions of people. Eradicator goes back to his kind of uh, energy only form. And uh, Cyborg Superman calls, you know, Bill Clinton and tells him, hey, I couldn't stop him. But he didn't try to stop him. So right then you know, okay, he's bad. He's working with Mongol. And they end up building the engine city in place of Coast City. And you find out that Mongol is really reporting to Cyborg Superman in order to create a new war world. So it's pretty crazy. There's all this dust and debris in the air so nobody can see in and Cy Cyborg Superman's reporting from the inside saying there's no survivors even though they are and then he just kills them. So he's like super evil. He's got a vendetta against Superman. It ties into his origin. Then we have this uh, Kryptonian war tank that was inside of uh, the Eradicator's fortress, escapes and starts heading towards Metropolis and... Uh, we don't know what it is, whether it's a robot, whether there's somebody inside of it yet, but we come to find out. Then we got Superboy figures out that Cyborg Superman is e uh, evil. He ends up fighting with him, luckily survives and heads back to Metropolis. Here's like the religious factions that hang around Superman's tomb. There's people that believe Cyborg Superman is the one true Superman. Then there's people that believe it's the Eradicator Superman, and they go at it all day and night in front of his, uh, his tomb there. So this is before Superboy escapes. He's held captive by Cyborg, Superman, and Mongol, but he hangs around long enough to figure out the evil villain's plan. Again, the war tank going towards Metropolis. Cyborg Superman convinces the Justice League to uh, attend a, an issue off planet to get them out of the way. They're convinced that he's the true Superman. I guess because of the, the Kryptonian DNA test or whatever. So then this is a... Uh, at the Eradicator's lair, and we start seeing, you know, how it was just uh, an artifact, and how he had gained consciousness and fought Superman, and um, basically tells us how he took on the mantle of Superman. As the war tank pushes forward, and we can see that someone is inside of there, wearing a black costume with the silver Superman emblem. So then, boom, the real deal. So now a fifth Superman emerges. Superboy escapes. My man uh, puts the moves on Lois. She kisses him, immediately regrets it. So she's trying to fight with the fact that maybe Clark is not going to come back. Maybe Superman really is dead. Because, you know, it's not healthy to kind of keep thinking he'll come back if he's really dead. Superman continuing to move forward. He finally gets out and people uh, think he's a threat. Steel and Supergirl try to fight him. He comes out straight Jim Carrey. Ace Ventura when nature calls style and uh, it's Superman but again people don't believe it right away because it's like yo four people have already come out talking about they're the real Superman so they don't really believe him right away but he's like look man I'm Superman I'm back and we got to go take care of Cyborg Superman and Mongol this is a uh, Hank Henshaw's origin so this is where they kind of tell us how he became the Cyborg Superman Clark uh, convincing Lois that he's the real deal, grabbing Steel's boots. So, because he his power is not one hundred percent, and I guess um, the way that Superman came back is essentially 
um, a Kryptonian matrix uh, having to do with the Eradicator, and the Eradicator kind of prevented him from coming back sooner. Uh, it feels like, and that uh, you know the cells needed to uh, soak up more solar power because uh, that's really what killed him is that he had no more energy. This is straight 90s style. Superman's powers are low, so he's got guns. A missile goes out towards Metropolis that only Superboy was able to get a hold of. <laughs> and now this is where it seems like Superman may be getting his powers back. Like he ends up uh, jumping off the ledge and, and falling easily down. But it, it ends up being that uh, it's really Matrix as Supergirl in her invisibility just kind of assisting him so that um, Cyborg, Superman, and Mongol don't see on camera that there's someone else with them. Superboy prevents the destruction of Metropolis, so his hero arc has redemption. This is kind of like what's happening with the Eradicator. He's trying to go back into the same Matrix that powered him before, that uh, brought Superman back to life. But uh, it's not working the same way. I guess because he needed Kal-El's body there to absorb his energy. See, this is that kind of JRJR uh, art style, right? Again, straight 90s style. <laughs> Superman with big guns looking like Rob Liefeld drew it. So then this is where Cyborg Superman starts doing his machine thing. Like, he's really not, that's not his true form. He can put his consciousness into any metal, I think, even the floor. So it's a kind of, it's kind of a cool battle between Steel and um, Cyborg Superman. Green Lantern comes back home to find out that his entire city, everybody he knows and loves, is dead now because of Cyborg Superman and Mongol. So he's pissed. The art, I like the art here though, it's, it's kind of gritty, it's cool. We get the one lone Green Lantern issue, and some of this stuff kind of like has the same panels, or the same dialogue in different panels, but it's basically how Green Lantern comes back, finds Engine City in the place of Coast City, and he goes after Mongol, and he has a battle with him. Some great artwork here. Green Lantern gets his arm broken. He's got to go full on Green Lantern armor to take him down. It shows Superman come back out with uh, Steel, and then that replays in this issue. So from from this perspective, which also had that Chromium cover that everybody had as a kid that I absolutely loved. He goes Eradicator, so he's no longer posing as Superman, and kind of replaying that Green Lantern battle here. Like I said, but from a different perspective, showing how Superman got his emblem blown off. Nineties leg pouches guns steel gets all his armor blasted off cyborg superman looks menacing man so then here's more like eradicator explanation as he teams up with superman against cyborg superman superman sticks his hand through his chest and vibrates at a high frequency uh, uh obliterating uh, obliterating cyborg superman uh, i think matrix transposes his og costume and everybody starts to believe that yeah that's the real superman so Better than ever, this is the return of Superman, returning to Lois Lane. She's now convinced, grabs himself a hot shower. And it kind of feels like when he returned back from exile, it's kind of similar. Even like when he first sees Jimmy Olsen, he picks him up in the same way. Yeah, see right here where he picks up Jimmy Olsen the same way that he did from uh, returning from exile. This is where they come up with the idea that Clark Kent has been trapped in rubble the whole time. So they, he rescues somebody else and then says, okay, let's get Matrix in there to look like Clark so that I can rescue him and this way Clark Kent can return and people aren't any the wiser. Superman gets some tests run, run on him. They kind of figure out uh, he got lucky that he was able to be revived. This guy comes back and uh, kind of explains it all to us. Sam Spade, Dr. Occult. So he basically takes... Uh, Lois and Superman on a little journey throughout the events that happened and really explaining to the readers what happened and how he was able to survive. And then that's it, man. Superman is back. The Omnibus has some great pinups on the back. I believe these were from those die cut covers. I could be wrong, though. I'm surprised they didn't show those covers here. So some cool artwork in the back. Love that logo with Doomsday punching through the emblem, holding the cape. These were uh, t-shirts, man. I need to find some throwback t-shirts of that. And then we have some sketches. All right, guys, there we go. I know this was a long video, but it was a big omnibus, a lot going on. And is it a gimmick or is it greatness? I mean, I like to think it's a little bit of both, man. It's like a YouTube thumbnail. If it's not something that's going to get people to watch, 
No one's going to watch it. If you don't make a big stink about the death of Superman, no one's going to pick up the comics. It definitely brought a ton of people into the hobby, readers and speculators. But I enjoyed the story. I thought it was epic. I love Doomsday. Yeah, he just kind of came out of nowhere and disappeared like the same way he came. But, you know, that's not the last that you see of Doomsday. The reign of the Superman was cool. Funeral for a friend. I really enjoyed seeing how people reacted to Superman dying. Which is funny because in the real world, there were similar reactions. People were going crazy when this happened back in the day. So I dug it, man. This is an easy gem mint seal of approval for me because the death of Superman was a trade paperback. One of, if not the first one I picked up as a kid and read through. And uh, having it as an omnibus with all the tie-ins that I could never find and collect back in the day just makes it that much more perfect. I'm digging it. Let me know what you think about Death and Return of Superman in the comments below. And stay minty fresh. Peace.